We definitely need global targets for rural. But those targets have to also come with the mechanisms to be achieved. Because setting targets alone isn't enough. We're talking about some of the countries which are really lagging with respect to access to rural drinking water that local governments hardly function. Take a country like Zambia, where several years ago you only had three people in central government responsible for looking at rural water supply. So we need global targets because it's totally unacceptable that all rural people do not have access to drinking water. It's unacceptable. It's a human right. But those targets need to be backed up with action. And that means action and commitment from governments, national governments, to proper decentralization, which includes financial and human resources at local level, because the central government can't be doing with everything. And it also needs the long-term backing of development partners, agencies, NGOs, to support that entire process. <coughs> right up to the end. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten. Do you want to add something, uh, François Major? <laughs> no, okay. I'm okay with this vision. We need global targets for the rural and the urban. If, uh, I understand that it's perhaps more complex and more complex when we are with these people without uh, access uh, to, to, to water. Uh, in some time uh, scarce uh, areas. However, without global targets, the rural will not have will not be high in, in the agenda. And we need to to, 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 to highlight the rural. And we could not have an urban with a strong target going uh, right in the right direction that we, we can measure and uh, rural without that. So it will be your task to have this global target and to, to, to support your group to, to have this global target. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Well, <laughs> can I say something slightly different? In my view, um, there are problems in the urban half of the world. There are problems in the rural half of the world. But what is important is that in all governments, in all countries, national policies do address both types of problems, rural, rural challenges and urban challenges. At the global level, it's completely different. At the global level, we need something to, uh, to have a common vision, to have a common goal, and obviously we have to address both problems. We have to improve access to water in rural areas and in urban areas. The challenges are the same. There are, there are more problems in the rural areas, but the trends are more negative in urban areas. So we have to face those two challenges. Thank you, Gerard Payer. Mr. Singh, you are a man of experience, and you told us there was some discussion about when will this universal access target be reached in urban areas. So from your experience, what is your preferred state? Uh, Mr. Chairman, in fact, as I mentioned, during the last one year, we have been interacting and talking with governments who ultimately have achieved it. We have really been taking up whether by 2025, the kind of deadline that was given to us, what percentage of population, you know, should uh, really have additional access. But with the, with the mandate of the UN resolution, governments also feel now constrained to target to that. The, there are some governments who are very keen, I would say that the government of India itself has declared, you know, to achieve the 100% target by, they are saying by 2020. But there are governments which have problems 2025 was a kind of general consensus, but 2030 also are the voices which are being said, but not beyond. Not beyond. Thank you. <laughs>
We will anyhow be all retired probably at that uh, height. Thank you, sir. I have, uh, I think we have another five minutes just for two questions from the from the floor to these two uh, panelists. Who wants to say something, or who wants to ask a question? <laughs>